Ach, wie ein Morgen einmal. Ähm, jelle, die Last Week muss jelle die Italiener gedeutet haben, aber ich habe nicht die äh, Memorandums für die Gestür für die Vorstellen, die jelle muss gedeutet haben. Nein, nein, die ist die November 2018 Vorstell 1. Und jelle muss davon gedeutet haben, die Lesbegriff und die Opsummen. So, wir beginnen mit dem Lesbegriff. Comprehension, Frage 1, Question 1. Um, die Liste geht gegangen über Juma Sekela, sein Leben in Dinge, was er getan hat und so fort. Um, ich kann nicht die Liste für alle lesen, sehen, ist aber ein völlig Liste. Um, hier in Deutschland ist auch drei, ein paar gute Stücke, was belangreich ist für die Liste, geht. Aber für nun kann uns die Frage tun, die Antwort, und uns kann nicht tun, dass wir es alle in Klasse tun. Ich kann für alle die Frage in Afrikaans, ich kann die Frage für Deutsch und Englisch, was ihr in Nürnberg geht um zu wissen. Van die vraag en dan gaan ons die antwoord bespreek. Goed. So vraag 1.1 sê op wat er dorp is Juma Sekela geboren. So in which town is Juma or was Juma Sekela born. Now you'll see the word op here is in brackets. That means it is not necessary. If you have it in there it's fine. If it's not in there it's okay. But the town, the name that we're looking for is Witbank. Okay. Um, it is important to note that in the comprehension section of your question paper, spelling does not count unless it changes the meaning of your sentence. Um, Vidbank, however, is the name of a town, so I would appreciate it if you can actually just copy it directly from the text correctly, as is, in other words, that you have it as capital letter, W, and then the rest of the word. Nummer 1.2, wat er type kuns het Jus' pa beoefen, what type of art did Jus' father practice? Again, sy pa was a, you can leave that out. So beeldhouwer, beelde gemaak, beeldhou kuns, beeldhou werk. Anything that tells me his father was actually busy um, doing um, or making sculptures, that's fine. So it's built over, he was creating sculptures, whether from wood or stone or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you have built over, built over kunst, built over anything like that. Then number three, warum kan die film Young Man with a Horn gesien word as die begin van groe dinge vir jou masikela? So, why can the film Young Man with a Horn be seen as the beginning of big things for you, Masekela. So, first of all, we have to look at what happened after he saw the film. So, it was not that he had the film seen it, that he decided it or motivated it to play trompet. So, the biggest thing here is play trompet, meaning this film made him want to play the trumpet. Anything similar, sort of like, on boer genoemde is aanvaardbaar. So if you have something similar to this, it's not exactly the same, they will still give you the mark. Dan, nummer 1.4. Nou, wie is uit Afrika se eerste jeug orkes vernoem? So, um, to whom or after whom is South Africa's first youth orchestra named? Um, you don't have to put in the Archbiscop, the Archbishop, as long as you have Treble Huddleston, that is fine. Then number five, you het gesikkel om trompet te leerspeel. The most important part here is gesikkel, he struggled. Then you have to say one sentence or give one sentence from paragraph two, hal een sin uit paragraph twee aan, om hier die stelling onwaar te maak, to make the statement False. So they're already telling you the statement is false. You now need to prove that false. All right. So the sentence here is you must uh, you hit the instrument. Go bas gerak. Go bas gerak means he ma mastered it quickly. He managed to play it quickly. He learned it fast. Now, as you see here, it says kandidaten gaan nie gepenaliseer word as hulle did niet is an aanhaling steken skryf nie. So the quotation marks that um, in front of you and at the end there is not necessary. However, if you put it in, it shows you know your language. You know, you, you know your rules. You know what needs to be done. 
so I would appreciate it if you could remember to put that in please then number six Huma Sekela hit Niopse Aya success Bahani you did not reach his success by himself Kies die correcte antwoord tussen die hakies. So choose the correct answer between those in brackets. Always remember when doing, um, choosing the correct answer, do not copy the paragraph or the sentence. Only copy the words in the bracket that you choose as your correct answer. Please, it makes it extremely difficult to mark if you don't do that. Goed. So, um, uit paragraaf 2 tot 5. Lei ons af dat Trevor Harnelston een van die personen of die enigste persoon was wat een positieve bijdrage tot Jesus success gelever het. So, from paragraph 2 to paragraph 5, we can deduce that Trevor Huddleston was one of the persons or the only person that had a positive influence in Yuma Sekela's success. He was one of the persons, een van die personen. Okay. Why do we say that? Nummer 6.2 moet jy veer jou antwoord met a feit uit die leerstuk. So choose or motivate your answer with a fact from the paragraph. It says that Travel Huddleston het vir jou gehelp om sy eerste trompet te kry of trompetlesse te neem om a, of om die land te verlaat. So if you focus on Travel Huddleston, what he did to help um, you, Masekela, you can say that he helped him to buy his first trumpet, or get his first trumpet rather, to um, take trumpet lessons, or to leave the country. Or you could also focus rather on the other person that had a or had part of success in the story, which is Louis Armstrong. Okay. Hy het bijgedra tot um, Jusik sukses, omdat hy aangeraai het om sy unieke stijl te ontwikkel. Okay? So Louis Armstrong um, told Hugh Masekela, instead of playing the American jazz or the jazz of the South, um, where he was in New Orleans, um, he should rather develop his own sense or a style of jazz which later then became known as African jazz. So again, any similar answer to what is given here in your in soort gelijke antwoord is acceptable but be careful. 1.6.1 must be correct for 1.6.2 to be correct. So if 1.6.1 was incorrect you will not get the mark for 1.6.2 and in the past exam papers questions like this have been becoming more popular so um, I would advise you just to look carefully especially on questions where motivate or explain your answer um, if the first one is incorrect the second one will then also be incorrect Good, dan gaan ons oor na nummer 1.7.1 Hierdie jare was die gouwe jare vir jazz music. These years were the golden years of jazz music. Now they ask, 7.1, wat er jare vorm volgens die leestuk die gouwe jare van jazz? Which years, according to the reading passage, forms the golden years of jazz? Dis 1960 tot 1964. That little thingy there, okay, the um, hyphen, can also be replaced with the word, let me just get that sorted, can also be replaced with the word dot, I can't seem to be writing now, there we go, okay, can also be replaced with the word dot, all right. Um, be very careful of using the word N because N limits it to the 1960s and then the 1964. Alright? Um, so if you say N, it's only two years, whereas saying TOT, it um, 
put then to those four years, 1960, 61, 62, 63, and then part of 64. Um, so that is very important to remember. A lot of students lost marks that year because of that poor little line there. Then number 7.2. Wat is die figuurlijke betekenis van gouwe in die aanhaal in die boos? So we're looking at the figurative meaning of the word golden. Now, um, these two words are not going to be, uh, these two questions are not going to be linked like we had with 6.1 and 6.2 because the one has to do with the years, the other one has to do with the meaning of that. All right? So... In this case, the, uh, the golden, what does it mean, is by a goeie, the beste, the successfulste, or by a successful, um, gewilde, by a gewilde, het goeie geld gemaakt, anything that tells me that this was a very successful time, that is perfect. Then we get to number 1.9. Waarom kan een mens sê dat het nooit use het doel was om geld uit te be... Oh, we skip nummer 8, sorry guys. Waaruit lei een mens af dat het vir jou sy muziekloopbaan goed was om na Louis Armstrong sy raad te luister? So, why... Um, or what can we... Do, how can we deduce, rather, that it was good for you's music career to listen to Louis Armstrong's advice die raad het van hom een internationale ster gemaakt, of het vir hom sukses gebring, so the advice made him an international star, or got him a lot of success. Um, also, Yu's um, debut album was very successful. Yu's debut album was by a successful. Anything similar to that is acceptable if you said that, um, omdat hy na hom geluister het, het hy een groot ster geword, so because he listened to him, he became a, good, a great star, um, hy het wereld bekend geraak, he became uh, well known over the world, anything similar to that is fine, as long as you make sure that by listening to his advice, this happened, that's okay. Then number uh, 9, waarom kan een mens sê dat het nooit use het doel was om geld uit sy bewonderaars in sy eie land te maak nie? Very important here in the question is to focus on not to make money and his own country. Okay, so why can we say that it was never use um, main focus to make money out of the fans, bewonderaars, fans in his own country? country um, first of all in your answer then you will have to have something about South Africa or South Africaners or South Africans as to the two gangs geld the entrance fees for South African um, shows for tunings was by a minder of min as by say oorseese for tunings so anything that tells me that South Africans on average paid less money to get into one of his shows um, in South Africa, that is perfect. Then number 10, haal twee achter een volgende woorde uit paragraaf 7 aan, wat aandui dat jy mas ek jylle verskillende dinge goed kon doen. Again, very important, twee achter een volgende woorde, two consecutive words, which means if it's not next to each other, you will not get the marks. That's the first thing. Second thing is, if you have more than that, and these two words, by talente, is not um, underlined or highlighted in some way, you won't get the mark either. Okay? So, um, two consecutive words from paragraph 7 that tells us that you, Masekela, did different things very well by a Talente. Okay, again, you will not be penalized if it is not in quotation marks, but please try your best to put it in quotation marks as far as possible. Good. Then, number 11, who verskil use a role in the music play spell King Kong van sy rol in Sarafina? So, we're looking at two of his um, well known. Um, 
musicals, all right? King Kong and then Sarafina. So now we want to know what is the difference. For Skull, what role did he play? In other words, in King Kong. And what role did he play in Sarafina? And how do these two differ from each other? So in King Kong of the Ian, um, he was part of the orchestra. Okay, he had an orchestra gespeeld. He was the of the orchestra. But in Sarafina or the other one, you helped write the music. Okay, so the most important two things here is the difference. It counts two marks, so obviously you need to mention what he did in King Kong first, and then what he did in Sarafina in order for you to get the marks. You cannot just say, I had the music gespeeld and geschreven, because which one did he write, which one did he play? So you need to make sure that you specify in the one, King Kong, he played in the orchestra, and in the other one, Sarafina, he then wrote the music. Anything similar to that is perfect. Yuma's Kela had prostate cancer gehad. What er ander probleem het you met sy geso or het you sy gesondheid beinvloed? So Yuma's Kela had prostate cancer. What other problem did he have that messed with his health? And that is alcoholisme of he was a alcoholist. Usually one would see uh, something like uh, this here, soort gelijke aanboog genoemde, anything like that, um, with an answer like this. But I remember we specifically discussed this question at the memo discussion that year. Um, if someone drinks a lot, I drink beer, uh, it's not necessarily that he's an alcoholic. Um, so drinking a lot, yes, it will obviously have detrimental health effects, but it's not the case with you in this case, for example, because he was an alcoholic. He could not function without that at a certain time in his life. Obviously, he did overcome that at a certain stage, but you get what I'm saying. So we can't say I drink beer. It has to be alcoholism or I was a alcoholist. Then number 13. Um, wat beteken dit as mens sê dat you a mentor for young kunstenaars was? What does it mean if we say he was a mentor for young artists? Hy het sy kennis en vaardighede met young kunstenaars gedeel. So he shared his knowledge and his skills with young artists. He taught them how to play musical instruments. Um, I had other young kunstenaars, um, of other young kunstenaars had, had sy voorbeeld gevolg, or wou sy voorbeeld volg, so other young artists followed his example, in other words, to be original, don't do what everybody else is doing, do their own thing, and you was a role model, of a raadgever, of a leermeester for baie young kunstenaars, so you was a role model, um, he was someone who gave advice, he was a, a, a teacher to many young artists. Any one of those or something similar to that, that tells us he helped young artists, that is fine. Remember, we are looking here specifically at mentoring. So if you say he funded their projects, that's not really what a mentor does. A mentor teaches. So if you wrote something like there are a lot of um, art scholarships or music scholarships in his name, something similar to that, um, perfect. You can get the mark for that. Then number 14. Is the title Umhlandu through my father's eyes gepas vir die reeks videos oor you en Salema se reise dier Suid-Afrika. So, if we're looking at the title, Umhlandu, Through My Father's Eyes, is this name fitting for the TV series where you and Salema, his son, travelled through the country? Yes or no? Motivate your answer. Again, if there's no yes, there's no no, you cannot get the mark. All right. Remember, we spoke about this in class at the beginning of the year. If you have something where you maybe said, um, 
ek stem saam dit is gepas of ek dink dit is gepas. Anything like that that indicates either for the argument or against the argument, you can still get the mark. So it's not necessary for it to be a definite yes and a definite no. All right. So number 14 then, uh, would you say the title is fitting? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Want tijdens die reise door Suid-Afrika het Selema die land leer ken so sy pa dit geken het. Die land door sy pa se oor leer ken of gesien of gesien waar sy pa gereis of groot gewoord het. So during these travels throughout South Africa, um, Selema started to know the country as his father knew the country or learned to know the country as his father did he um, studied or he saw the country through the eyes of his father in other words he experienced it as his father experienced it and he saw where his father grew up and where his father traveled in his life then number 15 um, here we have either a yes or a no now number 15 says Denk jy you verdien om die orde van Ikamanga te ontvang? So do you think you deserves to receive the order of Ikamanga? Yes or no? Now if you read earlier on in the passage the order of Ikamanga is um, an, uh, uh, a prize or a um, I can't remember what the other word is now um, but it's basically an honor given to a person who has done great things in his or her field and uh, the order of ikamanga is specifically um, an order given to someone in the arts whether it be acting music um, anything similar to that writing poetry anything like that it's the highest order given to an artist in south africa so is it right that he received it or is it fair that he received it and um, that he deserve it so here you can say either yeah he was an international star so he was an international star um yeah he had baie aan die gemeenskap teruggegee so he gave a lot back to his community from his um success in music he was the father of South African jazz he's the father of South African jazz of he had uitgeblink op sy musiek gebied. He shone brightly in his musical genre. He was the best, in other words, in his musical genre. Anything similar to that is fine. Um, you can put stuff in there like he was a uitsonderlijke um, musikant. He was an exception, exceptional musician. Um, in South Africa he did a lot for the arts in South Africa. Anything similar to that is perfectly acceptable. You could also go the negative route if you really want to. So near, you was nie die enigste South Afrikaanse internationale star nie. So he is not the only international star in South Africa. Um, of daar is baie mense wat baie vooral gemeenskappe doen. There are a lot of people that do a lot for their communities as well. Or you can just say there are other artists who are just as good or even better than him. That's also fine. Then number 15. We did now number 16. Die skryver sê dat jy mas ekela na sy dood in die harte van die mense sal bly voortleer. So the writer says that jy mas ekela after his death will remain in the hearts of South Africans. Wat kan South Afrikaners doen om seker te maak dat jy nie vergeet word nie? What can South Africans do to make sure that you does not go forgotten? Goed, so. South Afrikaners can still sy music group, so they can still buy his music, listen to his music, and make sure that younger generations then also know about him in that regard. Hulle can still na sy music luister, same as the previous one basically. Jaarliks a music concert hou, wat sy naam dra, so they can have a yearly concert, or an annual concert rather, in which um, the concert carries his name. The Yuma Sekela Jazz Concert, for example. 
um, beurse met sy naam beskikbaar stel vir jong muzikante, so they can be a trust um, created in his name that gives bursaries to young musicians. Gereeld artikels oor jou, wat oor jou handel publiseer en lees, so a lot more articles can be written about you and published and read and so on. And the opkomende geslachte van you vertel. So they can tell um, the next or the coming generations about you and what he did for South African music and so on. Then number 17, choose the correct answer. Kies die correcte antwoord om die sin mee te voltooi. Again, skryf net die letter, write only the letter, langs die vraagnummer, next to the question number. Uit paragraaf 11 kan ons afleid dat Juma Sekela se goeie werk in Suid-Afrika something is. So, from paragraph 11, we can deduce that Juma Sekela's good work in South Africa is something. So now we have the words erken, vergeet, vergoed, kritiseer. If we're looking at the words, let's start at the bottom, kritiseer, are we criticizing his work? No, we're most certainly not. Vergoed means to pay, like um, if you did something, then you expect something in return, whether it be money or by um, receiving some form of acknowledgement for that. So is it really what we're doing here? No. Vergeet, are we trying to forget his work that he did in South Africa? Most certainly not. And then if we look at the word erken, earlier in the text we more said now that he received the order of Ikamanga, which is an erkening, an acknowledgement of his work that he did for South African music. So obviously it makes more sense to choose number A. Although number C is very close, we really did argue quite a lot about that in 2018 when we were busy marking this paper. Um, but in the end, the panel decided only number A, um, acknowledgement for his work, was acceptable. So that is what our answer is, our erkenning. Good. Then number 18. Number 18 is a column A, column B. It says, Huma Sekela se lewe was vol hoogtepunte. So Hugh's life was full of um, highlights. Kies a gebeurtenis in Colombia, so choose something that happened in column B. Wat by die datum in kolom A pas? That fits in with the date in column A. Skryf slechts die letter, write only the letter, langs die vraagnummer, next to the question number, for example 1.18.4F. Goed, so 1.18.1 says... 1959, and that one goes with number D. U is deal van a baie successvolle muziek blijspel. Okay? So U is part of a very successful musical, um, or a play, a musical, and that was, if I am not mistaken... I can't find it now in the text, but I think it was um, do, 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 King Kong. Yes, that's the one. King Kong. It is in paragraph four. No, paragraph three. Sorry. Paragraph three was part of King Kong. Then, uh, 1963, that is number C. You se eerste album word freigestel. You's first album or his debut album is released. Then number 18.3.2004 goes with number A. You's a book oor sy lewe verskyn. You's autobiography um, is released. Sy book oor sy lewe, book about his life. Dan nummer 19. Lees weer die subopskrif. For those of you that I can't remember, it says, My grootste obsessie was om vir die mense van Suid-Afrika en die wereld te wees wie die mense van Afrika rechtig is. So my biggest obsession is um, 
to show the people of Africa and the people of the world who Africa truly is. Okay? So, you hit, I hit you, Masikela, on Hiri Gorda Getrouge So, did he stay true to these words? Motivate your answer. So, you can say ja. Now they say here, kandidaten met een van die volgende aspekte aanraak. So, candidates, that's you guys, must touch on one of the following aspects. Either A, Afrika sta nie terug vir die rest van die wereld nie, so Afrika does not stand back for the rest of the world, or Afrika het sy eie jazz style. Afrika has its own jazz style, so sta nie terug nie en eie jazz style. Either one of those two need to be touched on in your answer. So, you can have something similar to the following. Deur sy muziek en deur dinge wat hy gedoen het, het hy Afrika of Suid-Afrika wereldwijd aan die mense bekendgestel. So through his music and the things that he did, he introduced Africa or South Africa worldwide to the people. Hy het probeer om die beste van Suid-Afrika aan ander mense te wees. He tried his best to show only the best of South Africa to people. Hy het sy kennis en musiek oor Afrika jazz na ander Afrika lande of die rest van die wereld geneem. So he took his knowledge about African jazz to other African countries um, or to the rest of the world. En sy unieke Afrika style het Afrika op die kaart geplaas. So his unique African style um, placed Africa on the map. So these two go with that guy over there. All right, and then let me just get another color. These, these two then over here goes with the type of um, the jazz that he played. Okay, so that is basically that. Good. No, Hanos Anna text B. Text B. Most of the times, means when you get gaan tekst B of een strookie spreng wees, of dit gaan een vorm van statistieke wees. So usually it is a cartoon, it can sometimes be statistics as well. Um, so just keep an eye on that. Obviously we are going to do some examples of statistics um, throughout the, the coming exams and tests and things like that. Um, they can sometimes put in a form of an advertisement here as well. Good. So, um, text B, terug school to. Here we have a mother that is extremely happy, jumping up and down, thumbs in the air, smiling. We've got a doggy smiling. We've got an umi next door waving goodbye to two little kitties. We can see the two little kitties, the girl and the boy, are not very happy as they're leaving for school. We can clearly see they're leaving for school because they have school uniform on. Um, the girl is carrying a lot of books. The boy has a bag on his back, a cricket ball and bat with him. And then his face, all slumped and sad, says, Like my nie ons eerste schooldag laat jy se groot trane dal achter nie, so looks like our first day at school isn't really leaving them sad. So anything, um, yeah, good. No, nummer 20, nummer 20. Wat bedoel die sienkie as hy sê dat hulle eerste schooldag nie jy se groot trane dal achterlaat nie? What does the boy mean when he says, that a trana doll, by the way, is just a lot of crying. Eh? So, um, what does this, the boy mean when he says that our first day back at school isn't leaving them crying? That beteken niemand is hartseer of huil om dit hulle terug school te gaan nie. That's quite self-explanatory. No one is sad or is crying because they're going back to school. Amal is blij of opgewonde. So, everyone is happy that they're going back to school or excited that they're going back to school. En dit lyk nie of, am, of dit lyk of amal bly is om van hulle ontsla te raak. It seems like everyone is happy to be rid of them. Anything similar to that is fine. Um, if you want, you can focus on the picture itself. And you can say something like, niemand in die preenkie huil nie. So no one in the picture is crying. 
of Amal and Ibrahimki like Blay, everyone in the picture looks happy. That is also acceptable. Then, uh, what are two ways to start the ma the sinki savura? So, in which two ways is the mother strengthening that which the um, boy is saying? So, first of all, say spring any luck. Someone who is upset or unhappy will not be jumping in the air for joy. Ne? But the mother is doing that. So, say spring any luck. Say how are Daima in the luck. She puts her thumbs in the air. And unfortunately, this horrific word has been accepted in the Afrikaans language. So, you can say, say vice shop. But just spell it as is on the a memo, please. Jy kan sê, sy het breeg glimlach op haar gezicht, so she has a very wide grin or smile on her face. Of sy is gelukkig, want sy glimlach breed, she's happy because she's smiling a lot. Sy daans van blijdskap, she's dancing for joy. Of dit like of sy skree, it looks like she's screaming, something like yippee, or whatever the case might be. Again, anything similar to that, soort gelijk, is acceptable. Right. Then number 22, gee een rede waarom jy kan sê dat hierdie kinders heel moendlik nie hulle daar voor die TV omsit nie. So give reasons, one reason, why we can say that these children most probably do not spend all of their time in front of the television. So you need to look at the picture and say what about this picture or what about these kids tell us that they are active, all right? So, the Sinki draag cricket golf, so I name on sport deal. So, the kid, or the boy, is carrying a cricket bat, which tells us he's probably taking part in sports. If you um, focused on cricket ball instead of the cricket bat, that's also fine. Daar lees speelgoed of a bal of a vrachtmotorkie buiten rond. So anything that tells me there's a lot of toys lying outside. Speelgoed, a bal, a ball, a vrachtmotorkie, a little truck. Anything like that to tell us the kids probably play outside. Otherwise these things would not be there. Daar staan a fiets tegen die muur. So anything to tell me about the bike against the wall. That's also fine. And the daughter ki dra boeke onder haar arm. Anything about the books as well tells us that she's an avid reader. One of them actually looks quite like a um, one of those art books. So she could also be an artist, but focusing on the books, that's also fine. Again, any one of those or something similar to that is fine. Then we get to number 23. Die kinders se pa voel nie soos die ma oor die kinders se eerste skooldag nie. The children's father does not feel the same as the mother on their first day back at school. Tell us why this statement is false. So sê vir ons hoekom die stelling onwaar is. Die kinders se pa waai ook vrolik vir die kinders. So the children's father is also ook waving happily at the children. Hy glimlach bly as hy kyk hoe die kinders school to stop. He smiles widely as well as he sees the children walking to school. Any one of those or something similar to that is okay. Then it says, is dit correct om die afleiding uit die spotprint hierboe te maak dat kinders gewoonlik na die begin van die nieuwe skoolkartaal Uitsien, motiveer jou antwoord. So is it correct to make the assumption from this cartoon that it is um, that children usually look forward to the new school term? Now in this case, um, you need to read very very carefully because it says, is it correct to make the assumption from this cartoon? Okay. It doesn't mean we have to compare what is happening in this cartoon to what is happening in real life. We need to look only at the cartoon and what this cartoon is telling us. And from that, we need to make our assumption if children are usually excited to go to school, yes or no. So in this case, because we're only focusing on what is happening in this cartoon, we have to say no. Any sport print. 
kyk ons na die sienkie se lyftal. So in the cartoon we're looking specifically at the boy's body language, ne? Of sy gezichtsuitdrukking, or his facial expression. Wat daarop dui dat kinders nie van die eerste dag van die nieuwe schoolkwartaal hou nie. Which indicates that children usually do not enjoy the first day back to school. Uit die sienkie se woorde, from, so from the boy's words, in die spotprint kan ons aflei dat hy al vies is, omdat sy ma blij is om hulle op die eerste dag van die nieuwe kwartaal school toe te stuur. So from his words, we can see he's kind of upset with the fact that his mother is so happy to send them to school on their first day back. Okay, so again, any similar answers to this? Uh, we really didn't get a lot of um, wow answers here in the end of that year. Um, but yes, anything similar to that is perfect. You can work with that. Then we get to the summary. Um, now we've already explained this part in class 10,001 times, so I'm not going to go um, through that again. Um, all our memos basically look like this. All right, so we have the direct quote and then we have our own words. So what we can do from our direct quote, what we can see from that, and how we can change that. So we are going to work only on the direct quotes. In other words, we're not going to mark our own words because obviously you can uh, re rewrite this in your own way however you see fit, okay? So we're going to look if what information in our direct quote is in your own words, okay? So that is very important. You know that if you do not write in your own words and if you just quote directly from the text, you will lose marks for your language. So we would appreciate it if you can try and remember that. Okay, direct on our links. So in our first paragraph, first paragraph says, Daar is baie mense wat die staat sonder werk is en honger leid. Jy kan iets aan hierdie probleem doen. Een groente tuin kan help om vir mense werk te gee en om een gemeenskap van koste te voorsien. Hier is een paar wenke om mense te help om die groente tuin te begin. So here, we don't have anything because our, send, our instructions say you have to summarize soms 7 dinge op wat jy moet doen om een gemeenskapstuin te begin, to start a community garden. So telling us that it can give a lot of people work isn't really how we start it because that's only what will happen once it has been started, okay? So paragraph 1 generally does not have a fact in it. Always count the amount of paragraphs, okay? The amount of paragraphs will give you an indication how many facts per, cent or per paragraph you need to take out. So now we've already eliminated paragraph one because there's nothing in there. We are left with five more paragraphs, which means in two of these other five paragraphs, we will need to take out two facts instead of one fact. Okay, so paragraph two then says, As amal in die gemeenskap weet wat aangaan, sal hulle met mekaar saamwerk. Vertel dus vir amal wat jy beplan. Kies een komitee wat die tuin sal beplan en bestuur. Hierdie komitee moet besluit wat geplant gaan word en wie in die tuin gaan werk. Here we have two facts. Okay? Vertel vir amal wat jy beplan. Now, if we just look at this whole word or this paragraph or sentence here. Okay? Vertel dus vir amal wat jy beplan. If you go and you do this, you take that word out. This. If you take the whole this out of your sentence, then it will read, vertel vir amal wat jy beplan. It is your own words. Okay? You can do that. It is not wrong to do that. I would appreciate it, of course, if you can write a sentence like Licht gemeenskap in oor die planne vir die tuin. That would be a perfect sentence. But if you do this, take out one word, that's also fine. The second fact that we take from there is Kies a komitee wat die tuin sal beplan en bestuur. So choose a committee that will plan and manage the garden. Okay? So, um, in this, they change it a little bit by saying, kies a komitee om die tuin te beplan, instead of wat die tuin sal beplan. Okay, so instead of wat die tuin 
selber plan, they said, om die tuin te beplan. Alright, so again, basically the same sentence, a few words changed, and there we go. Then, number three comes from paragraph three. It says, om a groente tuin te begin, en aan die gang te hou, is mense nodig wat sekere dinge kan doen. Byvoorbeeld, iemand wat die water na die tuin kan aanlei, Maak a list van mense in die gemeenskap wat die verskillende take kan verrug. So make a list of people in the community that can um, do these different tasks. Okay? So again, you can change it by saying maak a list van mense wat verskillende take kan rug, verrug. So again, you can leave out that part of your sentence and you will still get the mark. Then number four is from paragraph 4. Um, niks kan gedoen word as daar nie geld daarvoor is nie. Daarom moet die begroting opgestel word om seker te maak dat daar geld vir die tuin is. So daarom moet die begroting opgestel word om seker te maak dat die tuin daar is. So again, if you just focus on begroting opgestel, begroting is a, a budget. So stel een begroting op of Mark seker daar is geld. Make sure there's money. Anything like that is perfect. Then number five, from paragraph five again. Uh, nou begin die werk. Kies die beste se grond wat vir die tuin beskikbaar is. Begin dan met die voorbereiding van die grond, die kompos mooi in die grond in te werk. So, from paragraph five, we get um, facts five and six. Fact 5 then, kry die beste se grond wat beskikbaar is vir die tuin. Anything to tell me to look for the best piece of land. That's fine. The second one then is to do with preparation of the ground. Voorbereiding van die grond. Berei die grond voor of werk kompos in die grond in. Anything similar to that is fine. And then the last one, die tuin moet kos aan die gemeenskap voorsien, maar dit moet ook geld maak. Dit is dus baie belangrik dat die groente tuin bemark moet word. Dan kan mense van buiten ook die tuin ondersteun. So the most important thing here is bemarking, marketing, advertising, those kinds of things. So bemark die groente tuin of laat die mense weet van die groente tuin. This one and the first one is quite similar to each other, do not confuse them. This is when the, the, the garden has already been um, established or everything else from number six up to number one has been done. Then you say, this is our goal for the, the, the Groente Tain. Is there someone that can help us? Okay, so it's an advertisement for that. All right, guys, so that's the first um, exam paper. We will obviously be looking at the other one um, as well. Um, if there's questions, you have my WhatsApp number, please send me a message, post on this as well, I will look at that as well. Any questions, please feel free to ask me, and yeah, happy marking!